This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, mystery, sci-fi film called Embers. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. As a neurological epidemic spreads throughout the world, a male survivor makes a list of the things he wants to remember. Some of the things in his list include the sound of ice cream trucks, the sleeping face of a girl named Emma, the first time he held Jasper, running into the ocean, and driving around on Saturday nights with Frankie. He also vows to remember his first car, his mother's beautiful hands, and the freckle on the back of Emma's knee. Inside a crumbling building, a young man wakes up next to a woman that he can't seem to recognize. The woman soon wakes up and asks him who he is, but he can only tell her that he woke up with her. When the girl asks where they are, he tells her that he doesn't know either. The girl notes that she feels like she knows the guy, and he tells her that he feels the same way. The guy notices a piece of cloth tied to the girl's wrist and assumes that they want to stay together because he's wearing the same thing. Elsewhere, a young boy wanders around the streets while humming a song. Nearby, a middle-aged man notices the boy and asks him what he's doing out there alone. Even though he doesn't respond, the man tells the boy to go with him, so the boy willingly follows him. As they go on their way, the boy suddenly grabs the man's watch, so he explains that it's supposed to tell them the time. He then puts the watch on the boy's wrist and continues walking. The boy falls behind for a minute to pick up a makeup kit from the ground, but the man doesn't notice. The boy soon catches up to the man and grabs his hand, but the man acts like it's the first time he has met the boy. The man surmises that the boy is on his own, so he promises to look out for him. When he sees the watch on the boy's wrist, he takes it off, noting that it's too big for him. He seems to have forgotten that he just gave it to the boy a few minutes ago. When the man finds an umbrella in the ruins of a building, he picks it up and dances around with it. After a while, he folds the umbrella and bows to the child as if he had just performed for him. Outside the city, Miranda goes through her daily morning routine in the safety of her home. After a bath, Miranda activates the artificial intelligence system with her necklace and takes a self-diagnostic memory test. First, the computer asks her some basic information about herself, so Miranda replies that she was born in Singapore on April 11. When the AI asks how long she has been in quarantine, Miranda reveals that she's been there for the past 9 years and 276 days. Then, the computer presents a scenario of a family living in a three-story house to test her memory. The AI narrates that a mother is putting a red rose in a vase in the dining room while her son is on the second floor putting on a green baseball cap. On the third floor, the daughter is placing a blue book on the shelf at the library. The AI asks Miranda the location of the rose and the son. So she correctly points out that the rose is in the dining room while the son is in his bedroom on the second floor. After the test, the computer tells Miranda that there is less than a 0.12% risk of infection. Inside a cabin in the woods, a teacher takes notes about improving his memory and reads through the old entries in his journal. Later, he goes outside to chop wood and takes a walk around the forest, following a blue rope, which has been tied to the trees to allow him to retrace his steps. Soon, he stops by a river to collect some water. Back at the house, the girl finds a can of peaches in a cabinet and shares it with a guy. When he notices the girl tucking her hair behind her ear, the guy claims that he somehow knew that she was going to do it. The guy surmises that he could be her brother, but the girl points out that they don't look alike at all. The girl deduces that they could be a married couple, so she gives him a peck on the lips to see how they'd feel. The guy asks her to do it again, so she kisses him more passionately. After the kiss, they both conclude that they are together. The girl stresses that she knew she loved the guy when she woke up earlier, although she's a bit confused. The guy contends that he feels the same way. On the streets, Chaos comes across the man and the boy while they're sipping on a can of soup. Chaos soon approaches the man and knocks him out to take the can of soup from him. After Chaos walks away, the boy lies beside the man for a while and tries to wake him up. The man seems unresponsive, so the boy leaves him behind and goes on his way. In the woods, the teacher successfully makes a fire in his cabin by following the instructions that he posted on the wall. While having a meal, he sifts through the pile of books on the table. A book called Reason and Rationality soon catches his eye. When he looks at the back, he finds out that he's the author. The guy and the girl are sure that they're together, but they don't know their names. So the girl gives him the name Ben, while the guy starts calling her Jenny. The guy starts looking all over the building to see if anybody else is there, but the girl discourages him for fear that they might get lost. After taking some food from one of the apartments, they continue looking around and find a room with a couch. The girl suggests cleaning up the place so they could live there, but the guy argues that they can't stay because he feels like they are on their way to find a better place. 
the girl fears that it's not safe outside, but the guy points out that they're bound to run out of food at some point. He assures her that they will return when they fail to find a better place. After grabbing some clothes, the couple leaves the building and goes on their way. Miranda and her father exercise later that day. But Miranda is unenthusiastic about the activity. During dinner, her father asks her about her cello practice and complains that she never allows him to listen. He encourages Miranda to finish learning a piece because her skills prove that humanity's creativity still exists. Miranda, however, is apathetic to his concerns and contends that she doesn't want to end up as another object in his museum. When her father asks if there's something she wants to talk about, Miranda stresses that she can't tell him anything because nothing ever happens to her because of her confinement. As the boy traverses the roads aimlessly, he encounters a woman who invites him to stay in her house. While showing the boy around, the woman puts on a tiara and claims that she was once a queen. After cleaning him up, the woman fills two bowls with candy and gives one to the boy. She assures him that he'll like living there because nothing bad ever happens to her. Later on, the woman puts the boy in a bed full of stuffed toys and tells him a story about a kingdom where everyone mysteriously vanished except for one girl. According to the woman, the girl searched everywhere for people and found them waiting for her in a house. The woman notes that they had a party and celebrated the girl's birthday. She ends the story by telling the boy that everything went well after that night. While wandering the streets, Chaos comes across a female survivor rummaging through the trash. The woman starts running when she sees him, so he chases after her. Chaos catches up to her in an alley, but she manages to get away. He tries chasing her again, but he stops when he sees a white horse. Chaos walks toward the horse and stares at it in awe before deciding to run off. Miranda looks at her childhood pictures and listens to the song in her playlist, but she doesn't find anything that appeals to her. After stopping the playback, she hears an opera song coming from her father's art gallery. When she goes there, she finds her father staring at an artwork depicting the ocean. The guy and the girl enter a neglected church and surmise that they've been there before because it feels familiar to them. The guy holds the girl in his arms longingly as they bask in the lights coming through the stained glass windows. Afterward, they go upstairs and set their blankets on the floor to make love. That night, the girl asks the guy if he still remembers going to sleep in the past. They both can't remember going to sleep the previous night, so the girl deduces that they might not remember anything when they wake up. She tells the guy that they shouldn't go to sleep because they won't remember each other. So the guy promises to stay up with her and assures her that they'll never forget each other. The next morning, the boy wakes up and attempts to leave the woman's house. However, he finds himself locked inside the room, so he decides to go through the window and continue his journey. Back in the church, the girl wakes up lying on top of the guy, but she can no longer remember who he is. The boy ends up wandering through the forest and comes across the teacher while he's gathering some firewood. The teacher tells him to go away, but the boy decides to follow him to his cabin. The teacher surmises that the boy is hungry, so he takes him inside and gives him something to eat. Later that day, the teacher takes the boy outside the house and expresses his amazement that he somehow knows how to chop wood when he gets hold of an axe even though he doesn't know how he learned it. He then instructs the boy to collect sticks in the woods and advises him not to wander too far from the cabin. After leaving the church, the guy and the girl realize that they don't know their own names. They have forgotten that they already gave each other names the previous day, so they come up with new names. The girl decides to name the guy Max, and the guy calls her Katie. While walking through the ruins of a building, the girl steps on a nail, so the guy pulls it out of her foot and runs off to get her some water. The girl wants to come with him, but the guy tells her not to move and promises to return. The guy eventually finds a water bottle inside an abandoned house, but he forgets why he took it. After taking a sip, the guy wanders off while the girl waits for him in the ruins. Chaos comes across a car park and smashes the abandoned vehicles with a pipe. Later, he tries to sleep in one of the cars, but several men arrive and pull him out of the vehicle. After beating him up, one of the men violates him. Chaos struggles and screams in pain, but he can't break free from his attacker. After his assailants leave him, Chaos goes to the roof in tears. He cries as he gets on the ledge and contemplates jumping, but he eventually forgets why he's there. When he sees a man on the street, Chaos starts throwing rocks at him while laughing like a madman. While eating a meal with her father, Miranda tells him that she no longer wants to stay in the bunker. The father notes that Miranda has been saying that since she was a child, and he hoped that she had outgrown her desire to leave. Miranda speculates that people could be doing well outside the bunker. 
but her father contends that someone would have sent them a message if that was the case. Miranda wants to look for her mother, but he hints that her mother is dead because the epidemic spread quickly when it first broke out. He warns Miranda that they'd lose everything if they left the bunker. The girl soon leaves the ruins, seemingly forgetting about the guy who promised to come back for her. After resting under a bridge, the girl wanders around on her own, without a clear idea of what she needs to do. Back at the cabin, the teacher discovers the boy trying to ride a bicycle, so he decides to teach him. At the bunker, Miranda finally performs the piece she's been practicing for her father. After the performance, Miranda asks him to leave the bunker with her, but her father insists on staying. She warns her that she won't just be leaving her home behind, but she'd also forget who she is, including the memories of her friends and her family. Meanwhile, the teacher takes a roll of thread and ties it around the boy's waist to prevent him from getting lost in the forest. As the boy wanders through the woods on his own, the teacher tries to figure out how to strengthen the synaptic connections in the brain to keep people from losing their memory. He surmises that the first step is to set off the neurons in a pattern, but he realizes that he doesn't have a way of knowing the pattern. The boy soon runs out of thread in the woods, so he retraces his steps to get back to the cabin. While Miranda looks at pictures of herself and her mother, the AI subjects her to the self diagnostic memory test. The computer then gives her a scenario slightly different from the first one. This time, the family is in a four-story house. The mother is putting a blue pillow in the bed on the fourth floor, while the son is picking up a yellow washcloth in the bathroom on the second floor. On the first floor, the daughter picks a pink scarf from the coat rack. When the computer asks Miranda the color of the scarf, she seems to give the wrong answer intentionally. The computer then asks her where the daughter is, but Miranda also responds incorrectly and claims that the daughter is gone. Due to her wrong answers, the computer tells Miranda that she's at serious risk of infection. That night, Miranda goes to her father's room while he's asleep to get one last look at him. She then leaves her home and goes through a long tunnel to find her way out of the bunker. Somewhere outside the cabin, the teacher continues teaching the boy how to ride a bike. The boy smiles in delight as he manages to ride without the teacher's assistance. The teacher cheers for him while watching him from a distance. Upon reaching the end of the tunnel, Miranda climbs a spiral staircase and finally gets out of the bunker. Miranda smiles and sheds tears soon after setting foot outside. Miranda walks away from the bunker and heads to the city despite the potential dangers. While the girl rummages through trash to find something to eat, she suddenly hears the thunder roaring. The girl immediately runs toward a small building where she comes across the people seeking cover from the rain. Beside her, the girl notices a man with a strip of cloth tied to his wrist. When she tells him that they have the same bracelets, the guy looks at her, and they both end up searching each other's eyes for a hint that they might have known each other. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.